So, Rabbi, what does it take to be a, a Jew? It's a very complicated question. Why do you ask? I want to be one. Why? Well, I want to marry a woman who won't marry me because I'm not Jewish. This woman Jewish? She is, yeah. She asked you to convert? No, it was my idea. In order to marry her? Yeah. I'm afraid that's not an acceptable reason to convert. Well, give me a better one. Mr. Haley, it requires more than circumcision and a yarmulke to make a Jew. Well, I realize that, but don't worry. That circumcision business is all taken care of. A convert must choose Judaism for its own sake, without precondition, coercion, or moral suasion. Oh, so I choose it for its own sake, without precondition, or that other stuff. But you wouldn't be here if you didn't want to marry this woman. True. So your motive is not pure. Consequently, you may not convert. With all due respect, Rabbi, that sounds like a lot of legal mumbo-jumbo. Now, if being Jewish made Gina the woman I fell in love with, then maybe being Jewish is something worth looking into. And you can't stop me from doing that. But I can refuse to allow you to convert if the reasons for your conversion are wrong. Yeah, but even if I look into Judaism for the wrong reason, what's to prevent me from converting for the right reason when all's said and done? Theoretically, nothing. Okay, then. If, after years of study... Years? Years? I told you that this is what the rabbi would say. Now, eventually, we must go on with our lives. Oh, don't give me that stiff upper lip business, Gina. There are plenty of people on this planet who've gotten married when people told them not to. Look at Robert Davis and his wife. And Al and Mrs. K. And what about that darn Duke of Windsor who married that divorce lady? Not to mention Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet committed suicide. It's not my fault that I was born a Gentile, Gina. Got to act since she wastes the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum. Have faith. Or pandemonium, liable to walk upon the scene. To illustrate Do my last remark. Don't in the way, no way in the yard. What did they do? Just when everything looked so dark. Man, they said you got to ask them. She ain't the positive healing. Money's a negative and last. To be affirmative, don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In Between. WREQ's first ever televised broadcast of a Cleveland Indians game. With Boudreaux, player manager on first, and nobody out, Mitchell steps up to the plate. Yankee pitcher Rashi has the signal. Here's the pitch. Isn't this exciting? I can't Mitchell believe we're the actually watching this happen live. Mitchell's only play at the first. He fires across and catch. No! The throw is low. Wolfell can't handle it. The ball gets away from him, so Boudreaux heads for third as Mitchell digs for second. Finley throws to second, but Mitchell is safe. So, thanks to some heads-up running by Boudreaux and Mitchell, we got nobody out. Runners on second and third. Second and third. Hey, Metcalf, you're as ham-fisted as that Yankee first baseman. Ready. <laughs> He's really got cut from the team. The Indians can't afford to have a Butterfingers like him in right field. Jeff only made three errors in 107 games last season. You tell him. The Indians will be lucky if they find someone half as good to take his place. Thanks, Mark. What do you have, Jackie? Rashi's got the signal. He checks Edwards at first. Here's the pitch. Olmack hits a high chop of the spear with third. Hey. Hi. Hi, Jeff. 
Charlie. How you doing? Uh, you don't want to know. Okay, if you say so. It's for your wedding? Yeah. I hope you have a long and happy marriage. No, I mean it. Thank you. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Well, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Well, then you buy me a cup of coffee. Sure. I like that about you, Ginger. You're always nice to people who are down in their luck. I get it. Okay. Don't you mean that I'm a sucker for a sob story? No, I think you're aces. You always have been. Always will be. Well, I might accept that compliment, but I don't think that's any way for a man who's engaged to talk to a woman who's engaged, unless they're engaged to each other. Gina called it off. I always thought if a person made a mistake in life, she could have a chance to make it up. Only thing is, it's not my mistake being born Gentile. I want to marry the woman I'm in love with and raise a family. Have a long and happy marriage, just like I wished you. Yeah. I'd be a great father. I'd never be a $10,000 a year man. But I bet you a dollar to a donut hole, I'd be a great father. Well, I always say, if it doesn't work out with the uh, one you're in love with, there's always someone else out there you'd be just as happy with. You really and truly believe that? Don't you? Doesn't look like that to me right now. Well, you have to accentuate the positive, like, like the song says. Not everybody is as good at that as you are, Ginger. I broke up with you, and bingo, you're trotting around with Jeff Metcalf. You break up with Jeff, and... You're engaged to Arthur, what's his name? Shelley. It's not that simple. You say you'd be just as happy with Arthur as you'd be with Jeff? I don't know if everybody can do what you're doing, Ginger. I don't know if I can for one, and I don't think Jeff will. I know, he's still down in the dumps. Well, he doesn't act like that when I'm around. Of course not. He's got his pride. He's not going to wear his heart on his sleeve in front of you. He's had more than his share of bad luck. In the space of just a few months, the poor guy lost his fiancée, lost his baseball career, lost his job at the radio station, and tomorrow they're going to repossess his car. Okay. And I'll give you a Joe Gordon and a Red Ambre for a Bob Fella. Nah, Gordon had a lousy year last year. Oh, go on that cat. Are you kidding? Ten Metcalfs that weren't a single feller. This card ain't worth being. Maybe you could trade it your sister, but I don't want it. would like you to avoid the word saffron. Why? The sponsor believes the word has some untoward connotation. And I believe he may very well be right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a color. It's a spice. Miss Westgate, would you come in the control room, please? Right away. Saffron is an oriental word, isn't it? Miss Westgate! After the wedding, why not have her husband on the show? That would be very sweet. As a regular, him a co-star, it would be a Mr. and Mrs. Act. Uh, sir, are you forgetting that when Arthur Schillip was Miss Debo's co-star on the Limo Tomato Juice Hour... Oh, how could I forget? Sales went right down the drain. Yeah, but we could hire another man to be her television husband. Uh, perhaps the one who was dropped from the Indians? Not Jeff Metcalf. No, not in a million years. When I tried to fire Miss Zabel, he drew a line in the sand and refused to work unless I kept her on the air with him. You're right, sir. We cannot tolerate such insubordination. Coach Selmick, open the door. 
over here. A uh, coach. Hi, coach. <laughs> a good day to you, Miss Zabo. And best wishes for blessed nuptials and a happy marriage. Your fiance is a fine man. It will be a pleasure to address you as Mrs. Arthur Schiller. You're very lucky. Yes, I am. Which reminds me of someone who hasn't been so lucky. Who would that be? Uh, Jeff. Metcalf? Uh, his bad luck is nothing compared to what happened to a teammate of mine in 32. No, it was 33. Coach. Couldn't you rehire him? I'm afraid not, Missy. His injuries... Oh, goodness gracious, Coach. Lots of your players fall down and, and drop fly balls, and most of them, you can't deny it, miss the ball most of the time. And Jeff can do that as well as anybody you have on salary, and he can sure as heck sit on the bench as well as anybody you've got sitting on the bench. Miss Abel, this is not a charitable enterprise. We're in business to sell tickets, and we sell tickets by winning games. It is not my job to keep every washed-up player, pardon the expression, on the payroll. Nobody ever asked him to choose this profession. You heartless man. I had you pegged as a human being, and I guess I was wrong because you've forgotten what it is like to be starting out and to hit rock bottom and have the whole world against you, and you have no heart. How's that leg? Hey. Oh, I'm working on it every day. What the smell? Reminds me of my barnstorming days. Well, it's funny you should say that, because I'm using Satchel Faith as liniment. Where on earth did you get it? Dave Davis. No noise. We played... He played in the Negro Leagues. You don't mean stretch, Davis. So Zelnick! <laughs> you gave this boy that foul-smelling medicine. <laughs> Uh, Why do they call you Choker? Ever since he went 0 for 9 against Satchel Page. No need to go into that room. <laughs> We've called him Choker. Before that, he was ladies' man Zelnick because... Uh, Stretch, the young players uh, look up to me. Oh, uh, well, they should. Choker. <laughs> Jeff, this is a good man here. <laughs> Have you seen this young man go through his paces? No, the team physician said that... Uh, he had no chance to come back after that leg injury. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Satchel Page's legitimate still works like magic. You ask me, Mr. Boudreaux would be smart to let this young man try out again. You, you think Medcalf is ready? I've been watching him work out for several months now. Well, just say the word. I, I think he is as ready as he'll ever be. You think so? I'll give Lou a call. What got you interested in Judaism? I have a Jewish friend I admire. Don't you have Christian friends you admire too? Oh, absolutely, but I already know a lot about Christianity. But I don't know much about you people. <laughs> if your interest is historical, I suggest you take a course at the university. Well, don't you have a class I can take just in case I might want to become a Jew? Learning about the religion and converting, two very different things. I know, I'd have to choose freely. And I know it'll take years, and years, and years, and years. Can't convert without knowledge, Mr. Haley. Well, I know I probably want to convert if I learned enough. I'm sure of it. How can you be sure of a desire to convert when you know so little about Judaism you came here to ask? Just a hunch. Then you're not sure? I got a hunch. I'd be sure. Thanks a million for uh, the lift, Arthur. Mr. Boudreaux said the only time he could see me was before today's game with my car gone and all. It's what told you to pick me up. Any time, Slugger. Why are we stopping? Ginger's coming to the game. Open the door, would you? Hi, honey. Arthur, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I didn't uh, realize that the... I, uh... Jeff needed a lift to the stadium. You look swell. Thanks. But then you always do. Mr. Vec asked Ginger and me to do some publicity shots today. Oh. It's a big day for Jeff, too. Lou's giving Jeff a tryout. Oh, he is? Yeah, coach persuaded him. Well, that was uh, very big of Coach. What's the baseball equivalent of uh, break a leg? Good luck, I, I guess. Good luck, then. We're keeping our fingers crossed for you, Jeff, aren't we? Oh, yes, we are. 
But even if you don't make it, I say look on it as a blessing in disguise. Because we all know baseball doesn't last forever. Uh, professional athletes usually back on the job market by the time he's 30. On the other hand, nobody asked us to get into this profession, which is why we keep all those irons in the fire, am I right? All right you are, Arthur. So what are your plans if you don't make the team, Jeff? Uh, well, I've, I've got a few things. Up your sleeve, well, good. Say, my father's corporation has just bought two more small manufacturing firms. He's looking for new personnel. Let's say I put in a good word, see if he's got a job for you. be back in uniform. Lou said to tell you he'd make his decision in a couple of days and give you a call. Go take a shower. Uh, thanks, Coach. Show Miss Kay. I don't need an overcoat. Take it in case. Here are your gloves and the umbrella. And I'm, I'm not going to Siberia. I'm going to New Jersey. Where, in case you haven't noticed, the weather is warm. Take it in case. Anne. Take it for my sake. I won't sleep if I worry, and I'll worry about you if you don't take that overcoat in case. I'm beginning to learn that Jewish mothers have got nothing on Irish mothers. So who's going to take care of you while I was away, Miss Kay? I'll take care of myself, Charlie, just like I have all my life. Linda, will you help me finish the ironing? Certainly. I'm taking care of her. So, Al, you think you'll find work back east? Well, my prospects are better there. At least I'm not the resident pinko. And I've got some friends there I think can help out. When I get settled, I'll come back and get in. Listen, I didn't want to say anything in front of Miss Kane, because I don't think she'll understand about me converting. But there's something I want you to explain to me. With all the Jews killed in the last war, how come you people aren't looking for a few replacements? You're not making any headway with the rabbis, huh? I'm finding it's next to impossible to choose to be one of the chosen. Let me guess. You said you wanted to marry Gina, and they said marrying Gina was not a valid reason for converting. I said that the first time, not the second. But it still ended up about years and years of study. I think he suspects I have something up my sleeve. I had to study these when I was a kid. You study them. If you've got any shot at all, learn the right answers. It's like studying for an exam. You study for an exam like you did in school. 
You know how many exams I failed in school? Coach, I need change for the phone. My car is dead. Ginger, why don't you find the number of a taxi while I call the garage? There you go. Thanks, Coach. I... Well, that taxi's gonna cost you a pretty penny, Miss Sable. I have no choice, Coach. I have to get to the television studio. You can borrow my car. Oh, sir, thank you. Jeff will drive you. Oh, no, I... A woman shouldn't drive at night alone on a highway. Metcalf. Sir. The mechanic will be here within the hour. What's the taxi number? Arthur, I told your lovely fiancé that you should save the cab fare. Medcalf can drive Miss Zabel to the television station in my car while you keep an eye on the mechanic. Don't want some bum ruining that fine automobile. Well, thanks, Coach. I'm sure my car will be fixed by the time you get back. Do you mind, Jeff? Huh? Son, come and get the keys. Yeah. We'll meet you in the parking lot, slugger. Right. Son. That young lady is still sweet on you. Hey, she had her choice between show business and me, and she chose show business. You gave her an either-or. I did? You're going to your grave a rookie in the game of life. Never give a woman an ultimatum. And never draw a line in the sand for anybody, because you always end up standing on your side of the line all by yourself, which you ought to know by now is a pretty lonely place to be. Coach, I... Shut up, son. You're running out of time. See this rotor? I took it from Martha's car to provide you with an opportunity. Now, that television station is not far away, but it may be just far enough for you to remedy your error. Now, don't let on that we're getting divorced. Divorce is a sure sign, Danny. That we're willing to sell below market value. I wasn't born yesterday. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Don. Mr. Sandler. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Sloan. <laughs> Uh, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be listing your home. Uh, are you going to uh, paint the exterior? Uh, we hadn't planned on it. Uh, I only mention it because uh, first impressions are important. Well, if you recommend it, we could touch it up. But, but the same colors, though. My Ruth picked out the colors. I've always loved her taste. <laughs> and why are you selling? Oh, we don't need all this space. Oh, no, heavens, I get lost in it sometimes. Does the fireplace work? Of course. You know, these days we don't presume a thing. Oh, you may presume that everything in this house is in the best condition. My husband wouldn't have it any other way. He's kept up this house like none you'll ever see. Why, thank you, dear. It's only the truth, darling. Kitchen's to the right. Ah, now, uh, here's something you'll want to touch up as well. Oh, I wouldn't get paint over that until after someone bought the place. Uh, well, it's a bit of an eyesore. It has sentimental value. Yeah. Huh. There were times when Mike Jr. used to come down to breakfast. Especially during his teenage years. It's where he'd grown an inch overnight. So we'd march over here and measure. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, see, here are the Christmas marks. And then in 37, we forgot on Christmas Day. So that year, we had a New Year's uh -huh. mark instead. Uh -huh. And before he went overseas, he was taller than Michael. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. It's not my job to decide one way or the other. Uh, my job is to get the best possible price for this house. I wanted to, um... I, sh I should thank you for leaning on Coach to give me another chance. Who told you? Coach. Well, I never got a chance to thank you for saving my job on the Lemo Tomato Juice Hour. I told Mr. Mellon not to tell you. But he didn't. I, I heard it accidentally. Uh, Why'd you tell him not to tell me? I figured if you knew I did, it'd be a question of pride or something. Well, you saved my pride? I was doing the right thing. No, I never no, know I, what to do. I never I, did. I, I'm, I'm meant to say that it was very sweet of you. Was it like the time you, um, paid that little photographer to take my picture? <laughs> Just when you were trying to give me the endorsement contract I didn't get, which yeah. wasn't your fault, and then you missed the photographer and didn't get your picture from the That wasn't so. your fault. Well, mm -hmm. Did you ever notice that happened a lot to us? So I have to do one thing and the opposite thing happens. <laughs> yes. 
What are you doing? Stop me in the car. Jeanette, I intended to marry you. I did. I intended to marry you. I drew a line in the sand. You didn't cross it. And once again, the exact opposite of what I expected to happen happened. question to ask a woman who's engaged to another man, but, uh, would you marry me instead of him? Yes. 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 Cleaning at my desk. I uh, didn't realize you'd been here long enough for it to get dirty. I wasn't cleaning it. I was cleaning it out. You're not quitting because of our disagreement. I'm quitting because my mother needs more help. And the factory pays better. You're quitting on account of money? Yes. Nobody becomes a writer to earn money. And I didn't either. And I would stay here if I could, but Al can't get a job in this town. And my mother can't take care of the house by herself, so I can't have two jobs. I have to keep the one that pays better. Pay you $35 a week. Don't tease me. All right. 37 with one week paid vacation. Not a penny more. Because I quit? Because you're a good reporter, and we need good reporters. Ever since the war, I have fought for a promotion at the factory. Begging. Doing extra work. Anything I could think of and got nothing. And because I say I'm quitting, I get a raise? Uh, for the morale of the rest of the staff, I most definitely would not make this public. So you think I'm a good writer? Get back to work. That's all you're getting out of me. If I quit again, do I get more money? Get back to work. Aye, aye, boss. Seems like a fair price. Very fair. And I'll do my best to get it for you. So I'll bring the papers by in the morning. And of course, uh, when you're ready to start looking for a new home, just uh, let me know. Good night. Good night. Because of me, because of my uh, infatuation with that young woman, and that's all it was, an infatuation. I don't know what got into me, and I'm embarrassed by it now. We are getting a divorce. And I can't bear the thought of it. You are the most fascinating woman I have ever known. And I have never loved any woman but you. Please accept my apology for hurting your feelings. I am sorry. Why didn't you say that ages ago? I never wanted to divorce you. I'm 
I'm never letting another real estate agent in this house. <laughs> when we first bought this house. <laughs> As if it were yesterday. The very first night we spent here. Before we had furniture. Here. In this living room. Ruth. Michael. The good thing about having new servants is we needn't worry about being interrupted. We tell Arthur the truth. But how, how do we say it? We tell him we didn't mean to fall in love. The... Uh, that sounds stupid. How about, um, it's nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault, and it's better you find out now rather than later. And you and he can still be friends. Don't, They're... don't say the friends part. All right. So we say it's better to learn about it now. Find out. It's better to find out now rather than later, and we tell him right away. Oh, sure. We just walk right up to him. Arthur, is your car fixed? Good. Because I'm dropping you like a hot potato. Waiting will make things ten. You know so work. much. I'm the one who told you that. And I agree, so just relax. Arthur will understand. And all in all, it's better that you find this out now rather than later. Uh. Uh. Well, I think he took that as well as would be expected. <laughs> I guess this means congratulations are in order, son. <laughs> Mr. Haley, are you aware that historically Jews have often been hated and persecuted? I guess I'm as aware of it as anyone. I used to be one of the people who did that sort of thing. But if the question means does it bother me to be hated and persecuted, no. Makes no never mind to me what people think. Maybe I can make up for my part of what's happened in the past. What initially prompted you to choose the Jewish faith? I know the right answer to that question, Rabbi. The right answer? There's only one acceptable answer. Of my own free will, and without ulterior motive, I seek acceptance into the Jewish fold. Now, the truth is a lot different than the right answer. The truth is, I fell in love with a Jewish woman. God help me. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I don't know why or how something like that could happen if I'm not supposed to do something about it. I mean, who understands God's reasons? Not me, that's for sure. He lets me fall in love with a beautiful Jewish woman, but the rules say I not only can't marry her, I can't become Jewish because marrying her is the reason I want to. But what if God had me fall in love with her just so I'd look into Judaism. If that's the case, then whoever's keeping me from Judaism is defying God's will. Now, I could memorize all the right answers and maybe squeak past one of you rabbis. But the truth is, when I first started studying, it was for the wrong reasons. I got interested. And whether or not you accept me as a proselyte, I'm going to keep studying and you can't stop me. Mamamadi said, the convert is the child of Abraham. And if you badmouth a convert, you're wrong. Now, I'm not a convert yet, but maybe it's not a bad time to remind some people that the Torah says 36 times it reminds the Jew to respect the convert. It also says 36 times to love the convert. How am I ever going to get to be a convert if nobody gives me a chance? These were both your fathers. Which one would you like to wear to your wedding? This one. No, that one. Uh, I like this one better. Well, then why did you ask? Will you sit still? Uh, I figure if I leave right from the reception and drive all night with any luck, I can be in Jersey by Monday morning. With prayer, you can be there safely. Fine, I'll use whatever luck Al has left you over. You don't need luck. With your talent, all you need is hard work and... and... a little prayer, but I could use a little luck. You can pray for as much luck as you need. I'll keep praying for your baseball career. Metcalf gone, residence. Yes, this morning. Jeff, the coach down there. Hi, coach. Boudreaux's gonna give you another shot. They giving me another chance? 
But he has to make sure what he saw wasn't a flash in the pan, so he wants you to join the farm team for a while. They're sending me the miners. You see, prayers are answered. And that will keep your punch cold for hours and hours. Well, folks, I want all of you in the audience to know how much I appreciate your cards and letters. And I, I am tying the knot on Saturday, like I promised. But my fiancé isn't who he was when I made the announcement. I mean, he, he is who he was. He's just not who I said he was. So, uh, when you tune into the next installment of the Fine Foods Family Hour, your new hostess will be Mrs. Jeff Metcalf. But you can still call me Ginger. Bye for now. A man by the name of Clement has not asked for me, has he? No. Well, when he does, could you send him to my table over there, please? I'll do that. I don't know anyone by that name. Is he in here often? Certainly not. He's a widely traveled man of the world. Mm. I'm not sure that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing, love, because even if half of what he says is true, he's richer than Croesus, and Croesus is my ticket out of this city. You're not marrying Arthur Schillip after having announced it on the air? Several times. But I am marrying Jeff Metcalf. But he's not a ball player. There's, there, there's no publicity in marrying him. Do you aid Miss Westcott speaking? Maybe the audience won't be able to tell the difference between him and Arthur. They both have dark hair. Miss Zabo, your latest fiancé. Hi. I've got great news. Boudreaux is sending me the farm team. Oh, congratulations. He is so a ball player again. Listen, they want me in Wichita for tomorrow night's game. I have to catch the 6 o'clock train. Wichita? We're getting married tomorrow. Ginger, you want to put off our wedding so you could sing a song. Now, all I'm doing is delaying it a little bit so I can play a few games and get back into the majors. I swear to you, I'll be as faithful as if we're already married. I'll play as hard as I can so I can get back as soon as I can. And what, what with you working and me playing, I, the, the weeks will go by in no time. Weeks? Well, a few months at most. A few months? Look, I gotta go or I'll, I'll miss the train. A, a, a few months? I love you. A few months? Hello? Sorry, I'm late, Caroline. Yeah, not at all late, Clemens. I only just got here myself. Please, have a seat. I'd have been here sooner, except that I got caught up on a business call. I have a beef ranch in the Argentine where there always seems to be a crisis. I prefer the stability of my banana plantations in Panama and in Guatemala. But I don't get down there as often as I'd like. Because I have these companies I have to watch out for in Buffalo and Pittsburgh and this shipping business. I'd like to mothball the entire fleet of ore freighters. Oh, they give me such a headache. Goodness. You're so busy, you may not have time to put another iron in the fire. Leave that decision to me, young lady. Did he make the train? That was time to spare. What are you doing out here? I'm coming with you. Yeah, and I don't have a job. So we'll be unemployed together. I'm not open to argument. Here, take this to the car. Linda? Ian! Will you get away from me and let me show off? I'm going to miss this house. I had three children here and I never thought I would ever leave this city. But so many things I never thought I would do, I ended up doing, so... I guess it's God's will that I raise my fourth child someplace else. The world isn't what it used to be. Neither are you. We'll drive back whenever Jeff and Ginger finally decide to go through with their wedding. If they ever decide to go through with it. Go 
when you get settled. I love you. I love you. And I expect to read you in the New York Times someday soon. Since this is the best course of action, this is your fourth engagement. But two of those were to the same man, Father. Look, we attended all our pre classes. We published the bands. The only thing stopping us is Jeff being such a minor. Now, I know during the war you married lots of couples. When the room was being sent overseas, well, Jeff is being sent to Wichita. Jeff, Jeff, I've made plenty of mistakes, and I'll make plenty more, but I pride myself on never making the same mistake twice. Father Dreher has agreed to marry us before we go, and I've got six whole days before my next show, and that means six whole days together as a married couple. Father, thank you. But the train leaves in five minutes, uh, four minutes. Y young man, young lady, I am fully aware our world is changing faster in my lifetime than in whole generations in the past, but I am bending the rules as far as I, in good conscience, can bend them. And I will not proceed unless we find a place more suitable to the solemnity of the occasion. And, of course, have the required witnesses. <laughs> if any man should show cause why this man and this woman should not be joined in matrimony, speak now. The train leaves in three minutes, Padre. Uh, Jeffrey, wilt thou take Virginia, here present, for thy lawful wife, according to the right of our Holy Mother, the Church? I will. Virginia, wilt thou take Jeffrey, here present, for thy lawful husband, according to the right of our Holy Mother, the Church? I will. Take her hand. I, Jeffrey. Two minutes. Say this together. I, Jeffrey, Virginia, take thee, Virginia, Jeffrey, to my wedded wife. Uh, I, Virginia, I, Jeffrey, take thee, to Jeffrey, have to have my wedded husband. This day to have to hold to hold for better, for worse, for better, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for in poor. sickness and in health. In sickness, sickness and in till health. death do us part. Till till death death and thereto I plight thee my troth. And, and thereto I plight, plight thee my troth. Oh, you have to get off the train, Padre. We're pulling out. Ego coniungo vos in matrimonium, uh, in nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Nomine Domini. Let's go to your room, Matt. I don't have a room, Matt. What about it? I, I don't have a berth. They don't pay for that in the miners. Well, well, let's get one. Let me take you to the conductor so you can get tickets, ma'am. Uh, uh, tell them that we would like a, a roomette. Well, I'm sorry, folks. No roomette or berth available. But when you change trains at Chicago, maybe you have better luck. We'll be in Chicago in a little over eight hours. See that counter? Of course. <laughs> uh, coffee or cobbler? What else? Uh, this may seem impulsive to you, but we are not getting a divorce. Oh, that's oh, good. That's yeah. good news. And we decided to celebrate, and what better way than with cobbler? Because you get part of the credit. If you hadn't quit. We might not have had the opportunity to... Uh, Come to our senses. I'll get some fresh coffee. I'll get the cobbler. <laughs> um, let's not hire anyone to replace the Davises for a while, shall we? That's fine by me. <laughs> We're friends of Mr. and Mrs. Davis. We've known them for ages. Did you hear that? She called me Mrs. Davis. No. Ruth Sloan referred to me as Mrs. Davis. The world truly is changing. <laughs> I have seen so many things I never thought I'd ever see in my lifetime. 
Lord only knows what will happen next. Thank you.